And welcome back to News 46. One woman has been taken into custody at the Saddle West for alleged drug sales. A woman by the name of Stephanie Cloberdance was taken into custody Saturday on charges of possession with intent to sell illegal drugs and various other charges. According to the report, Cloberdance's purse was found near the front of the Saddle West Casino. Nye County Sheriff's deputies received a report from security that a bag had been located with drugs inside. Upon a search of the contents of the bags, three loaded hypodermic needles, three small bags of what appeared to be methamphetamine, oxycodone, hydrochloride pills were found inside. Each of the needles found in the bag contained a different amount of what appeared to be methamphetamine and each were marked with a different color. The deputy noted in the report that different colors are the way that drug dealers use to differentiate between different amounts of controlled substances, making the sales of illegal substances easier. Security officers from the Saddle West reported that a male and female had been asking if the bag was turned in. When deputies arrived first on scene, they were able to make contact with Cloverdance, who matched the description that was given. During an interview with police, Cloverdance allegedly admitted to the deputy that she had the bag in her possession earlier that evening and that she had used methamphetamine in the last few days. Stephanie Cloverdance was taken into custody and is being held on $25,000 bail. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Two people have been taken into custody following suspected marijuana trafficking. Yesterday, the Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies followed up on information that marijuana was being delivered through the United States Postal Service. Deputies made contact with 48-year-old Wendy Kilgis, who consented to a search of mailed packages, which revealed approximately one pound of suspected marijuana. A search of Kilgis' residence revealed drug paraphernalia and firearms. At that point, Kilgis' boyfriend, Alan Peterson, came home. It was determined that he was prohibited from possessing firearms. Both Kilgis and Peterson were arrested and booked into the Nye County Sheriff's Office Beatty Jail. Arrested were 48-year-old Wendy Kilgis and 59-year-old Alan Peterson. They are both being held on $5,637 bail for charges relating to possession of drug paraphernalia and possession of marijuana, including ex-felon in possession of firearms. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. And the manhunt is over for the shooter that caused last week's carnage on the Las Vegas Strip that ended up with three people dead. Police say that suspected murderer Amar Harris has been taken into custody in the Los Angeles area. Authorities confirm he was hiding in the home of a woman he knows. Los Angeles criminal apprehension team had the house under surveillance and went in last week. Harris was arrested without incident. Over the weekend, police identified 26-year-old Harris as the man they believe pulled the trigger and located the Black Range Rover at his home apartment complex off Flamingo and Paradise. An item on last week's town board agenda was to approve an event permit for Mr. Dirk Schmidhofer to conduct an event on town-owned property, including but not limited to the newly created fairgrounds site. The idea to hold a Burning Man event here in town appears to have come from town board chair Harley Calkin to bring in our town an event that helps spur the economy. Burning Man promotes freedom of expression, theme camps, mutant vehicles, and lots of partying. The regional Burning Man event is a precursor to the main event held each year in northern Nevada's Black Rock Desert, where tens of thousands of attendees gather for a week to celebrate life, respect each other, the land they inhabit, and the spirit that is created there. The local event would have a two-tier ticket pricing system that would be applied with tickets costing $40 and $65. Attendance is currently anticipated to be capped off at 450 participants. Also on the agenda, board members discuss the possible approval of naming fields one and two at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park to honor the memory of longtime permanent resident Ron Floyd, who recently passed away. That item passed. Another item on the agenda was the discussion and possible decision to approve entering into agreement with Mr. Chris Tejas to pay 50% of engineering services provided by G.C. Wallace for an indoor swimming pool study. The indoor pool is proposed on the property of Custom Health and Fitness on the south end of town. The town board approved sending the item to staff for further information. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Home warranties. There has long been a debate whether or not a home buyer should purchase them. Today, EMB Clark brings you Angie's List report regarding home warranties. First time home buyers may wonder if it's necessary to purchase a home warranty. In today's Angie's List report, why you should read the fine print before making a decision. For the eighth year in a row, the home warranty category has topped the most complained about categories on Angie's List. 
When looking at the reviews, the most common complaints we hear are regard to people not understanding exactly what's covered in the warranty, and then also concerns about the quality of the work when they do use their warranty. Homeowner Ernest Goss was lucky. He had good experience and his home warranty worked out for him. I had to use my home warranty because uh, it was almost July when it was 100 degrees outside and my air conditioner just completely and totally shut down and stopped working. Uh, they're, they came out, they, char they did charge a service fee of $85 to come out and look at it. Uh, they came out, looked at it, said the whole unit was bad. They said they could either do just the unit or they could redo the whole system. Uh, they gave me an option. Uh, one was a little more expensive than the other. I chose a more expensive route to go ahead and fix any other problems that may occur. Uh, it ended up costing me, I think, $800 for a whole brand new air conditioner in installed with all the fees. Um, covered. Because the warranty companies get to pick the service companies they send to their clients' homes, it's important homeowners know beforehand which company the warranty company is sending and to do their research to ensure it's someone they want at their home. If you're considering purchasing a home warranty, you want to be sure that you really understand the contract because it all comes down to the contract. So read the fine print so you know exactly what is covered, what appliances, what types of call service calls will be covered, and then also understand how payment works. Is there a deductible? And also who makes the decisions about repairing and replacing? Home warranties can be a good option for home buyers purchasing a previously lived in home, provided they understand what they're purchasing. Warranties aren't designed to act as insurance to protect homeowners from loss. Rather, they're intended instead to provide service, repair, or replacement on home appliances and major systems such as heating and electric. When shopping for a good home warranty, you want to find a company that obviously covers all of the mechanicals of your home. So be sure that you've got an apples to apples comparison when looking at warranties. Does it cover the heating and cooling system? Be sure you understand that part. Then it comes down to, will they include an inspection before the warranty so you know exactly the condition of everything in your home? Also, do they have a low deductible and 24-hour customer service because you never know when that water heater will break. There may be limits to your home warranty, so it's important to read the contract in its entirety. For example, you maybe have a plumbing issue. If it's inside the house, the warranty may cover it, but if it's in the plumbing outside of your home, it may not. Most home warranty plans cost between $350 and $500 for a one-year contract. Adding enhanced coverages, if they're available, could increase that cost by $100 to $300. Homeowners typically pay an additional service fee ranging from $50 to $75 for each repair job. This is Ian B. Clark from News 46. Don't go anywhere. We have much more local news, including one of the Prump Arts Council's biggest events of the year.